Welcome to the honey company again. We are going to treat the bees uh, with an attempt to get rid of varroa mites. The treatment we're going to use is oxalic acid and glycerin. Oxalic acid, it's naturally found in a lot of different foods, including honey, so we're not putting in a synthetic chemical. Oxalic acid is a known treatment that will harm the cuticle on the varroa mite and uh, cause it to die. So if it comes in contact with oxalic acid, that's why we use oxalic acid. It's been found to be an effective mite treatment. So oxalic acid uh, can be in certain circumstances toxic. So while we're mixing it outside in a well ventilated area, got some gloves on, you may want to put a respirator on. Depends on uh, how worried you are about it. We've got a uh, glycerin uh, we're going to mix it with. So you'll need a whole barrel. Just kidding, you don't need that much. Food grade glycerin would be the best. I don't know the difference between that and craft grade. You can get food grade glycerin at uh, the big box stores, uh, have them. We're doing this outside, right? So we don't get fumes in the house, right? And I suppose maybe I should have a respirator on uh, just so everybody uh, everybody doesn't get after me, but uh, we're, we're outside. It's a little bit breezy today, we're okay. I'm going to put on some rubber gloves. We're going to warm up the glycerin in a pan. We've got a hot plate going. And we're going to use a recipe that is half and half. If I measure a half a cup of oxalic acid into one half a cup of glycerin, right? So it's half and half. So we're going to warm up the glycerin first on the hot plate. Then we're going to stir in the oxalic acid. I've already got enough for what we need today. You just mix it in there until it completely dissolves. It's got to be warm. You don't want it boiling. Don't do that. Just, just mix it up until the oxalic acid dissolves into the glycerin and it's clear again. I'm keeping an eye on the driveway in case uh, wifey comes home. And, get, and I get caught using uh, the, her stainless steel pot. So I want to get this done before that occurs. Right. Once that's warmed up and dissolved, I have some sheetrock mud tape. We're gonna soak it in that tape. I also have some Chipboard, we're gonna soak some in chipboard. And then we also have some shop towels, the blue shop towels. We're gonna to saturate it in that. I'm gonna soak the shop towels in it. And the uh, chipboard and the uh, tape, sheetrock mud tape. We'll let that uh, soak into it. And then before I put it in the hive, I'm gonna hang these up to dry. So the bees are going to want to remove anything anything foreign in the hive. So when I put this in the beehive, they're going to crawl across it and they're going to chew on it. And in the process, they're going to spread that oxalic acid around and get it on themselves. And then as they remove it from the hive, then they'll be exposed, the mites will be exposed to the oxalic acid glycerin treatment mix and uh, kill the mites. So I'll hang this up. Let it dry, then dry, and then put it in the hive. Why dry instead of wet? Um, I am going to put in some oxalic acid uh, shop towels in wet. I don't suppose it will really matter, but it's going to dry out anyway, and it's going to be a lot easier for me to handle. So I don't have to have gloves on uh, when I'm handling when I put it in the beehive. So this is going to be more of a time release oxalic acid treatment. They'll chew on that over a period of, uh, well, depends on how hygienic your bees are. It might take them a few weeks. They might get it out of there in a day. Who knows? But I want it to be dry. It's easier for me to handle. We soak that in the acid. I'm going to let it dry, and then we'll put it in the beehive. But I'm just mixing this up. So I got a nice tight seal on the lid. And so I'm mixing the acid inside of there, getting so it's saturated. All of the, the shop towels completely saturated. That's what I'm doing. We have a piece of hog wire here. Right, well, I'm just gonna use this. Let's see, I'll start at the bottom. I'm gonna let those soak a little bit more. Those aren't quite saturated. 
I'll hang these up now. So this is the sheetrock mud tape, joint compound tape. We're going to test the bees to see what their mite levels are. We're going to use this uh, easy check. We're going to use alcohol. So uh, we're going to sacrifice a few hundred bees to make sure that the whole colony doesn't die. Let's put it that way. We're going to pour the alcohol in the container first. So we've filled up uh, the uh, container about half full with alcohol. Now I'm going to take the basket to the beehive. Oh, I want positive ID on the queen bee before I shake any bees off. There she is right there. We made life easier for us for uh, this situation. We won't spend a lot of time wasting our viewers time looking for the queen bee because we put a bright yellow dot on her so we know where she is now we can move on with checking for mites because i know she's there and i know this one has brood i'll just take this one all right we know the queen's safe where she is i'll just put my basket right over the middle of this and shake some bees in it i put this right in the middle so the ones that i missed don't land on the ground they land in the box okay now we got more than 300. by the time i get this over to the the container there the fuel will fly out and we'll have enough in there here we go okay sorry bees all right now i gotta shake this for one minute that'll dislodge the mites from off of the honeybees i can already see some of them floating in there is that it time mm -hmm. okay all right now we take out the bees and we can see on the bottom of the container how many mites there are all right let's count so we've got um we've got one two three some of those are just little bits of wax in there. Four, five, six, seven. Looks like there's seven, let's call it seven mites. We got seven mites out of that one. So that's a pretty high mite count yeah. for this time of year. There's one more mite that was still uh, that was still on the basket. Eight. If you're doing this on a commercial scale, uh, this, is, uh, this is a good way to take a sample test. Of course, you can't do every hive, but that'll help you get an idea. Eight mites is enough that we would need to treat this colony for varroa mites so that the mites don't overtake the colony. Now we're gonna put in a mite mite treatment. We've got some varroa mite treatment strips ready to go. We got some on shop towels, they're wet. This is oxalic acid and glycerin, half and half mixed. And we put some on some cardboard strips and some paper sheetrock mud strips. So I think we'll use the uh, blue paper shop towels for this treat. So let's uh, come on along, let's go put that in. We cut the paper towels, paper towel roll in half, and they're a bit wet. So we're gonna put one paper towel in here, and we're gonna spread it over the surface with the, over the top of the, the top bars. Just lay it down like that. So the bees will crawl all over this uh, oxalic acid glycerin mix and spread it around the hive and it will come in contact with the varroa mite and kill it. Thanks for coming along with the honey company today. I, I just read an article about how treatment-free beekeeping, beekeepers, treatment-free beekeepers are, uh, are destroying the bee industry. So at the end of the article, I read it clear to the end because I was hoping that it would say, uh, I hoping that it would concede that eventually we've got to be able to 
have the bees take care of their own health, right? We can't continue to do it for them forever, but there was nothing like that. So I guess we're supposed to, so I guess the person writing this article uh, is the one that's been out there treating all of the feral colonies in the wild and all those attics and hollow logs and holes in the rock with uh, mite treatment so that they'll survive. <laughs> Just a little joke, right? So if we're going to be treatment free, so so don't uh, don't say that the uh, a person that wants to to try to keep their bees treatment free is a problem for the industry. It's exactly the opposite. So those commercial beekeepers who are perpetuating dependence on chemical miticide treatments for their bees are the ones that are harming the industry in the long run. All right, so we are treating for mites right now because we want our bees to stay alive, but it's not the ultimate solution, right? It eventually will come back to bite us sometime. Oh, uh, it's, it's a problem for many people now. The treatment free people are saying, hey, wait, you're not doing something sustainable. Eventually this is gonna come back to bite us, right? We've gotta have bees that are capable of taking care of themselves on their own. So let's all get along here for a minute, okay? What we need to do is we need to treat for mites for now so the industry doesn't completely collapse. If we let it collapse, we'd have the problem solved pretty quick. Well, three years maybe, then it'd be all over. But then it'd be billions of dollars in the hole. People would lose their livelihoods. The uh, fruit, the avocados, the almond industry would collapse. We can't do that, right? Let's meet in the middle now. Let's keep working on a treatment free solution. Let's work on hygienic bees that are gonna be able to solve the problem themselves. In the meantime, let's try to keep our bees alive with a safe, effective method that we can all live with. If you liked this video, be sure to check out our beekeeping courses at thehoneycompany.com. We're offering six full-length beekeeping courses for beginning, intermediate, and advanced beekeepers. See you there!